Heavenly Father, as I offer these words uh, this afternoon, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In an essay on the significance of decorative arts, or as Oscar Wilde would call it, the art we live with, Wilde wrote, the primary requisite for the critic is to be susceptible to beauty. This, he says, is for the cultivation of temperament, We must turn to the art that we live with, the art that touches us, not the art that attempts to teach us, he wrote. For the art we live with touches us in a thousand different ways, knowable and unknowable. These visible arts create our mood and our temperament. This is not so hard to imagine. We might think of the arts and crafts movement itself that sought to instill beauty and art in the common everyday life of people. We might think of a local potter or how a particularly well-made small batch teapot, a plate, a bowl, or maybe even a chair can make us feel when we touch and hold or sit and use and settle and how this might allow us in our very mood to change by the use of these objects. Or how wallpaper and paint can change a whole room. It can make it harsh or it can create solitude and peace all for the effect of it all. The point here is not merely about our reception or perception of our surroundings. Instead, it is about the cultivation of an eye, a voice, a hand. Uh, These are for the soul's sensibilities and the soul's susceptibility to what God is doing. Not to encounter more fine art, not to make us a specialist, if you will, but to have uh, an eye so as to create and make something new ourselves, to participate in a dynamic interrelationship, as theologian Eric Prisivara considers. Our difficulty, of course, is the problem of the mechanical age, the reproduction, writes Walter Benjamin, a philosopher. He says, it's where we take the fine art of ages past and we reproduce and reproduce and reproduce until it becomes kitsch. This is a process of representation, of multiplication, whereby the original itself is lost. Or maybe we might say mediated through countless re-multiplications of the image. Philosopher Baudrillard called this the simulacras, dissolution into simulacrum. Fancy words for what I just said. But it's wherein the original becomes multiplications disconnected and objectified. When such art we live with, as Wilde put it, is rendered meaningless by endless reproduction, it becomes something we consume instead of being formed by it, something we might have rather being remade by it, recreated by it, in order that we can become something new more beautiful self, more beautiful community, a dynamic and interactive group of people. See, this touches on the hard work of deaconing. It will be all too easy to think of your work as preaching to the church to tell people of the poor. Unless it is by church, you mean the streets, and by congregation, you mean the people in the streets. If not, then this 
is nothing more than a representation and an image made and multiplied for consumption. All too often such preaching and teaching inside siloed, boundaried church buildings replicates and represents the poor in a disconnected way. It allows a kind of distance, sanitation, a removal from us and them, from us and their environs, to controlled distant spaces that makes us comfortable, sanctuary, if you will, from the reality of community and the world outside. Bringing a story or a name into church through the words of a sermon for the consumption of the hearer then turns the hearer, the preacher, and the poor themselves into nothing more than buffered objects bumping around with each other. The poor then become part of the ever-present images of people softened by our mind's eye, ex-incarnated, if you will, by our removal of them from the physical presence of community. This is a disembodied poverty, disembodied hunger then, disembodied illness, imprisonment, and death. It all becomes philosophy instead of being located in the people who are hurting and weeping and sick and dying. Make no mistake, Christ's embodiment is no replication of divine economy, but a very embodied God that comes to meet us to know us and to live and make his home amongst us and amongst the poor, the wanderer, the sick, the dying, the dead, the searching. See, the hard work of the deacon is to be in the world, to take people with you to live with the poor, the oppressed, the bound, and the sick, and the dying, to spend most of your time with the people in their places. To understand their context and who they are. You must live, you see, with others. To live with the poor in such a way as to develop not a critic's eye, but Christ's eye. Able to see, to know, and be susceptible to their beauty. And to see Christ dynamically in them. This is for the cultivation of the deacon and the deacon's temperament. While some of you will be making your way through the diaconate on the priesthood, still others are meant by God to embody. This dynamic relationship is a rule of life forever. The truth is, all people are called to this work, to Christ's life and Christ's eye. It's not unique to the deacon at all. It's just that the deacon takes it on as a spiritual discipline and primary missionary focus for their ministry and ordination in the world. It is their full, the fullness of their rule of life. So we, so we must dare, you see together with deacons and the rest, to have our hearts touched, our guts moved, our eyes wetted, for this is what Jesus dared when he went among them, sat on the hill with poor and hungry, and saw them as sheep without a shepherd. It is what the disciples did when they saw the widows and the orphans neglected at the distribution, distribution of food and did something about it and pointed some to go and deal with that, to work on that, to live with them, to make sure that they ate. Your living with will not be so that we might be taught something new or that we might steal away representative images for a sermon later to be extolled. Rather, you're living with in a thousand different ways is for our and your very remaking, is for your transformation, your reintegration with God and with God's beloved people. Oscar Wilde speaks something then of 
a gospel truth, you see. Not to just live with art, but to live with each other as beautifully created and recreated community with Christ's eye and Christ's touch. It is such an imagination that might just make the Christian community worthy of the name, the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.